Yo, this is going to be a speedrun breakdown of my most recent point of contact run. So I'm just going to react to the video as it goes along and try to explain everything that's going on. So first, we check to see if that second hive is there, and it is. If it wasn't there, we would restart to get better hives in the first area. Then we search these two boxes to see if we can get a flare. We don't find one, but we'll get one later. So for this first drill plant, you don't need any speed buffs because the act of picking the drill up and placing it back down takes long enough that you can just walk between the helicopter and the drill plant. We're going to need to get all the challenges done. Uh, my upgrade strategy actually allows you to fail one, and that's designed so that you can fail the propane tanks challenges. In this run, I, um, I ended up like failing a different challenge, but I just lucked out and happened to not get the propane tank, so it's all good. As the hive comes to a close, we're going to throw a box of ferals so that we can get a movement speed buff, and then we'll do two little tricks to optimize the drill movement, which I'll explain shortly. So we pick the drill up, and place it down as quickly as possible. Once the drill is down uh, and, and running on a hive, you're basically on your own free time to do whatever it is you need to do before you have to move the drill again. That's essentially how this run works, is you just optimize the drill movement, and in, and in between, uh, drill plants, so as the drill is going through the hive and it's on a fixed amount of time, you just um, do whatever it is you need to do to get the speed run going faster, like work on your barrier high speed kill essentially. So the two pieces of, of drill movement tech that I mentioned earlier, I like to call them pre-square and the splant. I, I just came up with those names out of nowhere, but um, pre-square is essentially when you when you want to pick the drill, you have to hold square on it, right? And if the drill is above 75 HP, you can hold square before the prompt to pick the drill comes up. Uh, before the prompt to pick up the drill comes up at all. And so, we make sure that the drill is always repaired, and then you can hold square on the drill before the prompt comes up, and it'll make sure you pick it up in the shortest amount of time possible. And the other thing I call the splant... Uh, it's just a conjunction of sprint and plant. Basically, when you're sprinting and holding the drill, tapping R2 will make you stop sprinting and just start walking, and then tapping it again once you're walking will initiate the drill getting planted. If you hold R2, it'll let you walk around with the drill just ready to plant. However, if you just tap R2 that second time, it'll allow you to start sprinting again, which will let you... Um, plant the drill from slightly further away from the hive. Both of those two pieces of tech, you know, they, they don't really save much time, but they're fun to do, so I just do them, you know, just cause. The drill's taking too much heat. And you can see right now, this first area is pretty hectic because you have to keep track of so many things at once. Right now I'm coming back to um, repair the drill and make sure I'm ready to go on this next, uh, this next drill movement here, but I had to like... You, know, you have to make sure you don't get too caught up in placing the propane tanks and stuff that you forget about the drill, because that'll end your run immediately. There's a little like, sprinting plant. So yeah, as we're going through this first area, between drill plants, we're just attempting to get all 17 propane tanks on the barrier hive. And one way I like to deal with that is just to throw all the tanks up here in this little like um, elevated area drill. by the staircase and then and then work with them from there it's pretty easy to get them up to here <laughs> and you have to of course you have to be careful to not accidentally shoot a propane tank because if you shoot one of them probably all of them are going to blow up and that's obviously going to end your run <clears throat> so another thing you have to manage in this area on top of the drill and propane tanks and searching for flares and stuff is your money. You need to make sure that you have enough money to always throw a box of barrels at the end of each hive. And then also for the barrier hive, you want to go into it with specific, a specific amount of money for this technique I call barrel stacking. Um, but we'll get to that just a bit later. You want to make sure that the propane tanks are placed um, very close to the main bulb of the barrier hive because if they're um if you put them like too far away or like around around like some geometry on the hive it's possible that the explosion doesn't reach the hive and you would lose damage that way also i'm not entirely sure but i think if you throw the propane tank too high 
they can fully clip through the barrier hive and just like land over in the second area and not explode. So propane tank placement on the barrier hive does actually matter to a certain extent. <clears throat> As you can see, I like to juggle the propane tanks. I think it's probably the most efficient way to move them. Because you just um just continuously like throw one to the other. It allows you to it allows you to just like walk two of them down to the uh, um down to the barrier hive instead of going one at a time. <clears throat> On this specific hive location, <clears throat> you need to be careful of... Uh, you see how the hive has like a little tendril on the right side? If a propane tank gets thrown into that tendril, you can lose it. Uh, which is why I, I threw my stuff over into the field on the right instead of above it. Instead of above the little like tendril thing. What'll happen is the propane tank will get stuck in there, like in the little tentacle thing, and then as the hive gets destroyed, the propane tank will explode. So yeah, don't don't try to throw propane tanks on the like immediate right side of this hive as you're walking down toward the barrier hive. The electric knife. That's what, was, that's what just arced the lightning between all those dudes. I'd say the electric knife is surprisingly powerful um, in this area because of its ability to like falter enemies and get them off your tail. Uh, its recharge is weird though. <clears throat> it seems to... Uh, it, it has like a cooldown and that cooldown seems to get interrupted if you knife just like the air. Like if you miss a knife, the cooldown gets reset or... I think sprinting resets the cooldown too or something like that. It's weird. So just trying to make sure I don't fail this challenge and we're good to go. I'll go ahead and repair the drill, although it doesn't really matter for this one since we don't need to, uh, on the third hive we don't need to, um, do a... Any any fast drill movement because we have plenty of time before the barrier hive. Also, the location, the three locations of hives that I got in this area, is the optimal one. There's another one which involves like the back left corner hive. That one's just like behind the behind the motel. That hive's okay too as long as you get um, as long as you get the hive right next to like the sign at the very beginning of the map. You can either get the hive I got on this run or the one in the back left. Either one is acceptable. Run. Like you some You see me nodding like a maniac. That's because we got the good voice line. Whenever the helicopter comes in uh, for the barrier hive, he can say two voice lines. And one of them, the one we got here, is like four seconds slower than the other one. So <laughs> it's a pretty stupid... Um, uh, element of RNG, but you just have to deal with it for speedruns. So, right now I'm making sure that I'm between um, 2400 points and under, what would it be, 36. So I'm going to throw three boxes of ferals. This is the feral stacking that extends the feral duration up to 45 seconds. And then allows me to speed kill this barrier hive without having to worry about accidentally purchasing incendiary ammo instead of activating the weapon specialist upgrade. So now, because I'd stacked the ferals, I'm able to just pick the drill up immediately instead of having to throw another box and like wasting a second and fumbling around with my inventory and stuff. So in this area, there's uh, three possible hive combinations and it's like good, middle, and bad, and this one was this one was middle, so that's why this run wasn't sub 20. If you get the good hive combination, which is the closest one, then the um, then the one that's always there, the drill that I just planted, and then the other one, which is right by the electric fences, then you can um, then that would save like four seconds total over this run, just not getting that uh, not getting that really far out hive. I think this is the challenge I fail. I fail this challenge a lot. I just, I just forget that I'm <laughs> that I'm uh, doing it. <laughs> but it's okay because I got lucky and didn't get the propane tanks challenge. One other thing I should mention: uh, 
that I should have mentioned a while ago. So the drill movement speed is like the movement speed while you're holding the drill is the same as the movement speed of whatever weapon you were holding um, as you picked up the drill. You know, so like if you're if you're holding a riot shield and you pick up the drill, you're gonna go way slower than if you're holding a pistol. There's one exception though, and that's the upgraded pistol. That 10% speed buff that you get from having the upgraded pistol seems to go away when you pick up the drill, which is why I don't have the um, the pistol upgraded to plus one, and I saved that uh, that skill point is just like. Um, uh, like, n by not upgrading the pistol to plus one because you don't need it for drill movement, it allows you to fail a challenge in the run, which is... Obviously, it lets, it lets you fail the propane tank challenge, which optimizes barrier hives a little more. And it also just gives you a little flexibility if you're like me and buy this trap here. It just... Uh, I don't even think I meant to buy the trap. I think I meant to search this box, and I was just holding down square and then just bought it like that. But, <laughs> you know. It gives you a little wiggle room. I was sad. So yeah, for the um, for the first barrier hive, we use the VKS because that's the highest damage available to us in the first area. The second barrier hive, we're going to use the Bulldog because that's a little better than the VKS. And we're not using Cryptid Slayer ammo. Of course, we're using Incendiaries because of that uh, that whole thing with the Cryptid Slayer ammo not getting Weapon Specialist 50% um, damage boost. So might as well just use Incendiaries and do like 50% more damage or it's not 50% it's like I forgot what the number is but it's a lot because like the explosive ammo is like 10% damage multiplier but it ignores the 50% it's it's complicated but the incendiaries are better for killing in individual enemies the drill's under attack. <clears throat> whenever you're about to move the drill you want to make sure that you kill scorpions um, like they should be the enemy you prioritize as you're about to pick up the drill because scorpions can um, if they hit you it'll like stun you in place for a moment and then that can like mess up your your drill movement and like make you lose a second or two especially if you get like caught in the gas cloud so as um, as hives end I'll try to make sure that you know I use the barrel instincts wall hacks to take out any scorpions I see <laughs> this area only has 12 propane tanks as opposed to the 17 in the first area and also you have a you have a total of 9 minutes to get all of them onto the hive as opposed to the first area where you, where you only have um, I believe it's 6 minutes is it 6 minutes? because you have 1, 2, 3, yeah yeah, first area, you only have six minutes to get 17 propane tanks on the hive. And you have to, of course, move the drill every two minutes. And in this area, you have nine minutes to get 12. So this area is considerably easier than the first area. <laughs> Although you do still have to make sure you don't um, mess up and accidentally bro like blow a propane tank up. or Because you know, that will still end your run. A lot of the, uh, once you really get past the first area, most of the game is just kind of like this. You know, we're basically just playing the game, uh, normally. <laughs> and, uh, just moving the drill as fast as we can at this point. And then the the second barrier high speed kill will be different. That's probably one of the most, um, that's probably the hardest part of the run to figure out is this barrier high two speed kill. But I think I have a strat that works pretty well and consistently for it. I guess to go back to the first barrier hive, because I, I, I only have like 10 seconds to explain what was going on there. <clears throat> um, so for the feral stacking, you know, I throw, you can stack, or level 1 ferals will last you 15 seconds, level 4 ferals last 45, so you can stack feral instincts to last up to 45 seconds, which is why I threw three boxes of them in the first 
uh, right before the first barrier hive. Another thing is, um, when you are trying to activate your weapon specialist ability, you know, like the double tap up for infinite ammo, uh, if you have enough money to buy a box of ammo, then um, it's possible that your character will try to pull out a box of ammo during, like, while you're shooting the hive and, like, kill your DPS and make you fumble around and stuff and, and make you lose the run. So, if you make sure that during the barrier hive you just don't have enough money to buy a box of ammo, that won't be a problem. So that's why, uh, in the first hive, in the first barrier hive, I was making sure that I was between, what was it, <clears throat> 24 and 36, 100, because that's enough to buy three boxes of barrels, uh, and then afterwards not have enough money to buy ammo. I'm going to do something similar on this barrier hive, except instead of um, going between 24 and 36, it's going to be between 32 and 44, because we're going to actually buy four boxes of barrels. It's a little weird, we'll see, we'll see why, uh, when I actually go for it, though. I have a, uh, I have a theory that the arc doesn't work on barrier hives, like the damage multiplier just doesn't apply to them for some reason. Uh, the reason I think that is because I was testing the health of the barrier hive, like, to try and see how much HP it has, and whenever I tested it with, like, a regular gun, I would find 100,000 HP, and then when I tested it with the gun with an arc, it would be, I would find 130,000 HP, which um, is exactly in line with what you'd expect if the uh, arc multiplier wasn't active. However, there was some weird stuff I was seeing with the VKS, and so I'm not uh, entirely sure <laughs> uh, as of now, so I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that more, but I found an arc anyways right there, so yeah, it's whatever. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, it's, uh, I, I've, I've seen someone, like, in a comment say that Barrier Hive HP is random. I disagree with that. Definitely not. It's, I think if the Barrier Hive seems to have different HP values, like, it seems to, like, take inconsistent amount of times to kill, it's probably because either you're doing something differently as you kill the Barrier Hive, or it could be that arc multiplier, like, making you think that it has more HP than it, um, than it really does. Because, you know, one of my tests with the arc multiplier, uh, to see, like, how much HP the, or one of my tests to see how much HP the barrier I've had with, with the arc was, I tested it, um, I tested it with the IA2, and then I literally just, like, ran to an arc, put it on, and did it again, and, like, within the same barrier hive, and it, um, it was coming out as, like, different HP values, so, it's weird, we'll, we'll figure it out sometime. So yeah, the upgrade strategy for this run is, in the first area, we just, obviously, the first thing you do is put one point into Feral Instinct so you can have your, uh, your fast, your fast movement speed for drill movement optimization, and then, uh, and then we just maxed Weapon Specialist for the first area so that we could just take out that hive real quick with the BKS, pretty simple, and then now we're gonna max out the portable turret <clears throat> and do kind of like a combo using the portable turret and the bulldog. So during that hive, I was focusing on just trying to save up as much money as possible so that I could do this. That was that was another fast voice line, so I was nodding there. Um, so you have to buy a portable turret, and then we have to get myself down to um, between thirty-two hundred and forty-four hundred dollars. So, throw a box of ferals, and I'm like, okay, we need to be one lower than this. So throw another box of ferals, and now we're good to go. So what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna we're gonna do three feral stacks. So we're gonna we're gonna throw out three boxes of ferals. As soon as I hear the helicopter coming in, that's exactly what I did on the first one. Then we're gonna throw a flare, hop on the portable turret, and go to town. As soon as the portable turret is about to overheat, we're gonna we're gonna quick box another set of ferals, which will let make it last all the way up until we plant the next drill, and then we're gonna go and hold on.
if you uh, if you have like a very optimized fire rate and you just do it super smoothly, you can kill this thing without ever having to reload the bulldog. Unfortunately, I was like a shot or two short. Um, and then we can just pick up the drill. Of course, um, the bulldog and the pistol have the same movement speed, and the pistol arc doesn't affect drill movement speed, so we can just pick it right up with the bulldog and go and go run to this uh, this hive. I think this route is the fastest one, so you can kind of hit it as you're dropping down. Like that. And then, at this point, it's basically just like a normal game at this point. <laughs> there's no more there's no more propane tanks that we have to worry about, obviously, because there's no more barrier hives. Uh, we play the game through just normal but quick. All the way up until the last hive when we do the turret glitch. We'll explain that when we get to it. <laughs> also, one thing I feel I should say, um, the, uh, so feral stacking up three boxes of level one ferals is obviously, um, well, it's it's not as good as, as having a single box of plus four ferals because while they have the same uh, total feral instinct like speed boost duration, the plus four ferals has a sprint uh, endurance duration, which is it makes your sprint last eight seconds instead of four before you start doing those like little slow bursts of sprint. So having plus four ferals will save you a bit of time on that run from the second area to the third area. However it's not as much time as having a maxed out turret will save you, so, you know, we go with the turret instead, because it gives you a little more time to save. It's a, it's a beautiful rhino kill. Um, <laughs> yeah, this bulldog arc is, is insane with, <laughs> with uh, you know, not cryptid slayer ammo. You should, I believe you should be able to, um, you can kill mammoths in one mag with this thing, it's pretty wild. <laughs> in this area, there's two possible hive combinations, and the only thing that changes is that one hive that's on my left right now between the two fences. Uh, whether it's in that location there, or it's in the location directly to the left of it. But, if it's in the far one, it only loses about a second, so... If you have good hives in the second area, you can you can deal with having a bad hive in the third area. Like you, you wouldn't have to reset for that probably. So yeah, I believe that for the next three hives, there really isn't anything special going on. We're just uh, just going through the hive and making sure the drill movement after the hive is optimized. We don't even have to do the challenges anymore because you know we, we the only reason we needed the challenges for this run is to speed kill the barrier hives, and there's no more barrier hives left. So. Again, on this hive, I'm going to, um, pretty much the only thing I'm thinking about on this hive is just making sure I kill the scorpion that spawns in right as the hive ends so that he doesn't hit me as I'm making my way to the next hive and make me lose some time. One of the ways I like to ensure that he dies is to put an IMS directly where I'm standing right now because he likes to like jump up to that spot and then shoot you from there. put it yeah right here on the ground see if he spawns in there <laughs> but he didn't he spawned it up on the left so I'm gonna try to get him right here and then I'm gonna get him like that. Scorpions, look out! 
and then just don't jump off this ledge, run instead of jumping, because if you jump, you'll, um, you'll, like, break your legs at the bottom, and then you'll, um, you'll be stuck in place for a few seconds. A few seconds, more like a second. I was trying to get the leopard with a hypno knife, but I picked the wrong one, so I just got a hunter instead. If you hit the leopard with a hypno knife, he'll just, um, he'll just, like, disappear. I don't know if he blows up like an arc or not, but he just, obviously he doesn't get hit there because he wouldn't do anything. He's got hostiles on the drill! If you're wondering, this high here is three minutes long, whereas the previous two highs were two minutes long, so we'll be here a little longer. There's a rhino that spawns... I believe it's two-thirds of the way through, so at the at the two-minute mark, there's going to be a rhino that spawns in. His location isn't the same every time. It's dependent on where you're standing as he spawns. And we want him to spawn, like, right next to me, where I am right now. So we'll just kind of be hanging out in that location as we hit the two-thirds mark on the hive. Oh, there's a rhino. On the first time in this area, the rhino spawns at halfway, but he only, he waits until you've cleared out all of the enemies that had spawned you know, before his uh, before like the halfway trigger had come in. I think it's the same on this on this hive. I think the rhino waits until the until you've like cleared out all the enemies to spawn. In. But on the last hive, he just he just comes in at, at the halfway point, like no matter what's still alive. Should be like coming up pretty soon. He's wanting to stand in right here, trying to force him to spawn in this location so I can get him real quick. Bulldog. There's there's the noise, and I think I have to kill this guy on my right to trigger him to spawn. See, there we go. And there he is. Another one of those sprinting plants. Doubt it really saved me any time, but it's cool. So I like doing it. I think I'd remembered that I had already lit that dude up as I was trying to kill him. Uh, like I was trying to get rid of him before the drill transition, so that he wouldn't um, like mess up my movement. But I didn't get him. But I just remember he's really weak, so I just knifed him. Hive is literally just normal. There's nothing special going on here. We just do it. All of these hives are exclusively time-based. There's nothing we can do to speed it up or slow it down.
One more little bit of drill movement. <laughs> Trying to make sure I can get this IMS burned out so I have a fresh one for when I need to go do the turret glitch. Although since it would it hadn't fired any shots, I just placed it there. Normally I would like try to make it shoot all of them, but it's good to go. So we're gonna run back to the second area and place the turret down for the glitch. Yeah, this will work. What we're gonna do, we place it in uh, not exactly a specific spot. It's the area where it works is all pretty wide. We just go back here, place the turret down where I do, and then when you hop on that turret during the escape, it tricks the game into thinking you're in the second area which causes the second meteor to fall down faster and allow you to escape significantly earlier. So, put the turret like right about there. That turret placement can be kind of tricky because hunters and, ski and seekers can, uh, they can like attack you and like make it so you can't place it down until you kill them. Also, if you notice I like pre-fired yeah, randomly, work. that's because sometimes an enemy will just spawn there. Like he'll just, <laughs> It'll just like apparate out of nowhere and <laughs> I wanted to get the jump on him, but he didn't spawn in Yeah, if you put so you don't even have to need you don't even need a flare to go do that sticky flare or <laughs> see what to do that turret trick If you just put an IMS on the drill and activate the trap It'll it'll kill the dude off the drill and then the enemies will start like spawning in on you as you run back and the scorpions will stay by the drill, but they don't attack the drill like a hunter does, so it doesn't really matter. Chaps offline, might as well turn it back on to get some free bonus damage on this right now. It's about to spawn in. I'm trying to do the fast IMS trick on him just for just for funny. <laughs> that was the IMS rapid fire. Essentially what you do is you place an IMS down and it'll immediately shoot. And then if you pick it up and place it down again, it cancels the IMS's cooldown, so you can make it shoot all four of its shots very quickly. It's not really practical, it would have been significantly faster to just kill him with a bulldog, but it's fun, so just do it. So throughout the course of the game, we need to make sure that, or we can we can take downs. You know, if you go down in the first area while you're managing all the hives, it's fine. Um, but you need to make sure that you get to this point, or you get to the nuke with a down left. Because what we do is we jump off the side of the map behind the nuke, and that respawns us up um, up by the third hive in this area, kind of like on that little road that leads off the cliff which saves a few seconds from having to run up the ladder to get to that point because you just teleport to it. And then once you, uh, it's, it's like a suicide warp, so dying does take away your feral instinct, so you'll need to throw a new box of ferals after you get up there, but money's not really a problem in this area thanks to that 1.3x multiplier, so it's, uh, you'll, you'll never have to worry about <laughs> not having that feral ready to go. <laughs> also, you'll notice when I activate the nuke, I just kind of walk around the side of it awkwardly and fall off. I did a little, uh, I was playing like on day one edition, and I found out that you can actually sprint jump over the nuke and off the side of the map, 
which might like save a second as opposed to slowly walking next to the nuke. Although it is a little risky because if you somehow missed the uh, prompt to activate the nuke, that could kill your run. So you can totally just like sprint jump over that bitch and fall off the map, but we'll just walk like that. Make sure you jump far enough out around this corner or else you'll get stuck on the, the fence and it'll be really awkward. This rhino likes to climb up into the air and then just like fall through the wall sometimes, but he didn't this time. Here I'm trying to get some hits on that scorpion so that he um, is set on fire and ignores me for a little bit. And then we get on the turret and I, the hive, the extract marcher transfers really quickly. I activate the engineer bubble just so that things don't kill me while I'm on the turret. That was the sound of the second meteor falling. When you see the extract move, marker move, that's how you know you did the third glitch right, by the way. It seems to take a random amount of time. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes it takes longer than others. I, I don't know if you can, like, if your turret placement determines it, but... I also don't know if that affects the amount of time the run takes. It might. Again, just trying to get rid of the scorpions so they don't mess me up. And yeah, because that meteor came down so early, I know I'm basically just going to be able to run straight through. At this point, you're home free. You just have to make sure you don't get hit by a scorpion or a meteor. Should be all good. Helicopter doesn't seem to pick you up till about 2.30, though. Like, no matter how, how soon you get to this thing. So, like, we got to it at 2.35, but it's waiting till like, 2.30 to actually get us in there. Timing for the run stops when the mission accomplished pops up on the screen. Uh, the timing for the run starting was a little unclear, so I ended up starting my timer actually like a couple seconds late, which is why there's a discrepancy between this time here of 37.19 and the time on the leaderboards of 37.21. But it's all good. Thanks for watching.